Before I get into my review of the Fractal Design Torrent Nano, it would be an enormous help if you could first take a look at my review of the Fractal Design Torrent. And if you've got time, also take a look at the Fractal Design Torrent Revisited. Once you've got those under your belt, if you have even more time available, today we're also putting up a review of the Fractal Design Torrent Compact, which is a smaller version of the Torrent that is larger than a Nano. The Torrent was big. The Compact is a reasonable size. The Nano is tiddly. How has Fractal Design come up with the concept of the Nano? They've clearly stuck to the 180 millimeter fan format and also the idea of drawing in air from the front and the floor while keeping the power supply in the roof of the case. However, because this is a mini ITX, mini DTX design, you only have a certain amount of space to work with and therefore you get a single 180 mil fan at the front. But in terms of the look and feel of the Torrent Nano, it's crystal clear where it's come from. That front panel, that stands out a mile. And here's a look at the three cases side by side so you can see exactly how they compare in terms of size. Okay, let's pull off the panels. This glass panel, very lightly tinted. This glass panel, rather more heavily tinted, which makes sense around the back of a case because obviously you don't want the cable clutter on the show. On the other hand, why have a glass panel here at all? Why not go, you know, for metal? Top panel. And away. Front panel. If you've watched any of those videos of the Torrent, the Torrent Revisited, or indeed the Compact, that will be entirely familiar. A single 180mm fan at the front, you'll notice that the mounts and the brackets cover the rest of the area. And then we have a filter in the bottom. Hmm. Okay, don't know what's going on there. And then we have mounts in the floor of the case, as you'll now be expecting for either a radiator or fans. And we can do something with the front should we choose. Reaching for the accessory pack. We have a pair of brackets, so we can, if we choose, install 120 or 140 mil fans in the front. We also have there a GPU support, which I looked at for the compact and didn't use in the video because there was just absolutely no need. Uh, but in principle, it attaches there with two thumb screws protruding from the rear. You slide it up and down and it supports your graphics card, should you feel the need. The thing is, Mini ITX, Mini DTX, are more specialist cases and this form factor is certainly unusual small motherboard large fan so the fact it's relatively cheap that makes it all the more interesting to me let's go through the specification so we have one three and a half two and a half inch drive mount and two ssd mounts you have no optical drive bays with torrent there are three expansion slots because mini dtx Power supply, somewhat surprisingly, is ATX rather than SFX. On the front panel I.O. you have one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, two USB 3.0 Type-A's, audio jacks, and power and reset buttons. Fan mounts. In the front, we have the 180mm that's supplied, or we can swap in two by 120s or two by 140s. You have no top fan mounts with any of the torrents. At the rear, we have a 120mm fan mount. In the bottom, 2x120 or 2x140. If you want to use liquid cooling, you can put a 140mm in the front or a 240. So 1x140 or 2x120 or a 120 in the rear. In the floor of the case, you can have a 240 or a 280mm radiator. Power supply can be up to 200mm in length. The graphics card can be 335mm in length with the pre-installed 180mm fan. If you put a fan in the lower position, up to 310mm in length. CPU cooler, plenty of clearance here, 165mm. Behind the right hand panel, we have 29mm of cable clearance, which is more than the compact case. That's because you're using an ATX power supply in a small chassis. There's gonna be a lot of cable to hide away. Dimensions are small, 417mm in length, 
222mm wide, 374mm in height. The hardware going inside my test PC, we're going back to Intel 11th gen with a Gigabyte Z590i Aorus Ultra motherboard, so ITX as the name suggests. We have a Core i5-11600K processor installed. The memory is Kingston Fury Renegade. It's relatively lowly rated at 3000 mega transfers, but that's a mighty 64 gigabytes in dual channel. And the SSD installed under the hefty gigabyte heatsink is a Sabrent Rocket 4.0. So Gen 4, M.2, NVMe. Power supply. Remember, this relatively small case, ATX. So I'm sticking with Fractal Design. It's their Ion Plus 2 Platinum 860 watt that I've used in both the Torrent revisited and also the compact reviews. Graphics card is this RX 6800 XT from Sapphire. It's 10 and a half inches in length, so full sized, but not enormous. Plenty of clearance in this case. And this Noctua NHU12A Chromax Black cooler. I haven't yet done a test fit of this cooler in the case, but the spec says it has a few mil to clear. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to take the 180 fan out and put an AIO in the front, and I don't want to put an AIO in the floor. So air cooling, and it's black, so it should absolutely look the part. That's the PC built, and as ever with an ITX system, things are fairly tight inside, but it's not super tight. It's just a bit of thought is required. For example, the 8-pin EPS connector passes under the power supply to the top of the motherboard. You have to push it through, then put the power supply down because there isn't enough space for the block connector to go through. It's a small point, but one of those things to remember. So that's the PC done. Let's put the other bits and pieces on. I'll show you the top of the power supply just so you can see how much space we have to work with, which is actually quite a lot. I thought it would be really cluttered up there. Okay, definitely the option of putting a drive in that bay, no problem. Cable management in the back, I mean, it might not be brilliant, but it's not bad. On with the top cover. Front panel. Darkened glass around the back. A Core i5 with RX 6800 XT, 64 gig of RAM, and a Gen 4 SSD. It is a serious PC. Let's fire it up, see what happens. The two fans on the Noctua cooler are NFA 12X25s. They run up to 2000 RPM. It's actually 2050 RPM in, in these particular instances. And the 180mm fractal design at the front of the case runs up to 1200 RPM. I ran the fans in three configurations, full speed, 75% and 50%. And then I tweaked the speeds so they were actually correct for those percentages as they were all off slightly. So let's have a listen. Let's start with 50%. And now 75%. And 100% full speed. So yes, full speed is quite rorty. With the compact review, I had to remove the filter from the front, which I think made it even noisier. This has the filters fully installed, full speed, too loud for my tastes. I was surprised at the spread of temperatures. So at 100%, the Core i5-11600K is running at 63 Celsius and the GPU is at 78. We've got a system that's putting 540 watts at the wall socket. That's 140 watts for the CPU, 255 watts for the GPU. So it's quite proper loading on those components. Slowing the fans to 75% hurts both the CPU and the GPU. CPU gets 3 degrees warmer to 66, GPU gets 5 degrees warmer to 83. Slowing the fans again to 50%, CPU temperature jumps to 77, and the GPU to 85. Now admittedly, I'm putting a full system load on those components. It's a combination of Cinebench R23 and Time Spy Stress Test. It's a heavier load than simply gaming. It's pretty much a worst case scenario. But I didn't think those temperatures were too impressive. 
Having said that, if you're gaming, they will be better and clearly the system was okay. But uh, I thought it would be at least five degrees cooler on both CPU and GPU. And the GPU is sucking air in straight from the bottom of the case. I mean, look, there's a filter in the way, that's it. What do I think of the Fractal Design Torrent Nano? Well, the small form factor, clearly it's gonna sit very comfortably on your desk. It's a very tidy size, I like it. The combination of mini ITX with ATX power and a full size graphics card, it works well. It means you've got a decent amount of flexibility with your hardware. Basically the mini ITX motherboard is the only issue. The power supply and the graphics card and all the other components, pick whatever you fancy pretty much, that's good. And finally you have plenty of options for cooling and storage. Not huge numbers of options. I mean, it's a small case, but you do have options. You don't have to simply put on an air cooler. You can, if you choose, go for liquid cooling. On the con side, mini ITX motherboards inevitably impose limitations on you. They just do. Um, and generally also extra expense. But mini ITX, problematic. Obviously, you go mini DTX, the options from Zeus, very few and far between. Cooling in the Nano, it's fairly average. Borderline unimpressive, actually but I was stressing it. And the options for swapping out the 180mm fan at the front for 12140, I didn't quite get that. Uh, Fractal's giving you the options, so fair enough. It's hard to criticize them for that. But if you take out that fan, it's a completely different system in my mind. So you're gonna use that 180 and work around it. My final word on the Fractal Design Torrent Nano is it's a worth buying, an eight and a half out of 10. There are one or two issues you have to work around, but Look at it, it's a delight.